Hi. So in this video, I will be talking about some of the important qualities of meditation, which we need to keep in mind during the time that we do the walking or the sitting meditation. So it's not enough for us to say that we're doing the walking, we're doing the sitting on a regular basis, and expect that we should all receive the same benefits from the practice, no matter what's going on in our minds or how we're carrying out the practice. Our practice has to have certain important qualities to it in order for us to consider that our practice is a success, in order for us to really get something out of it. The first important quality of pra meditation practice is that we have to make the acknowledgement in the present moment. Our mind should always be in the here and now. We cannot let our minds fall into the past or go ahead into the future. We shouldn't think about how many more minutes are left in the practice or how many minutes we've practiced or so on. Our mind should always be in the present moment. We should also be continuously in the present moment. So not only practicing this moment or this moment, but that we are practicing continuously from one moment to the next. At the moment when we finish the walking meditation, we should try to keep continue our awareness and our acknowledgement of the present moment into the sitting meditation. Once we finish the sitting meditation, when we're going to get up and go on with our lives, we should try to continue into our lives, carry, it, carry on continuously. During the time that we're doing the walking meditation, we, the same, we should try to keep our minds in the present moment through the whole, pra, whole of the practice. When we do the sitting, trying to keep it on the rising and falling again and again continuously. Just like the rain falling, it is said that meditation practice is like rain falling. Every moment that we're aware is like one drop of rain. And though it might not seem like that much, once we're mindful again and again and aware again and again, just like rain falling, it can flood and create a huge flood or fill up a lake. In the same way, our awareness again and again and one moment after one moment can create very strong states of concentration based on the present moment so that we're very clearly aware and we create a great understanding and clarity of mind in regards to reality. Another important point is the actual acknowledgement or the quality of the acknowledgement. We have to first of all have a certain amount of effort. It takes effort for us to do this again and again and we have to acknowledge this. And we can't just let ourselves say rising, falling, rising, falling and let the mind drift. We have to push the mind and keep the mind with the present moment, with the object as it arises, whatever object that is. So if it's the rising and the falling in the beginning, staying with it again and again, sending the mind out. Instead of keeping the mind up here or at the mouth, sending the mind out to the object again and again and again. And keeping the mind very, sort of a strong state of mind. Keeping our mind strong and f focused on the present moment. Once, the, once we do this, then we'll begin to know, become aware of the object. And this is another important thing, that we're actually aware of the object as it is occurring. So that we're not just saying rising, falling, but once we push our minds to the object, that we actually know from the beginning to the end of the, of the motion. If it's pain, that we actually are aware of the pain. If it's thoughts, that we're actually aware of the thought. Once we become aware of the thought, then we can make the acknowledgement. And this is, of course, the most important part, is that actually we grasp and we fix the mind on that awareness, not letting it continue on into liking or disliking or creating all sorts of uh, mental activity or judgments about the object. The final important fundamental quality of practice is called balancing the faculties. So it's recognized that all people have certain faculties in their mind. These are qualities of mind which are very beneficial. Altogether there are five. These are the confidence, effort, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. And these have to, we, we say these have to be balanced with each other. For instance, some people might have strong confidence, but they may have low wisdom. This means that they have what we call blind faith. They believe things simply because of this is what they've been told, or because of some desire to believe, not because of any rational uh, understanding. Some people have strong wisdom, but low faith, so they doubt everything. And they refuse to believe anything even from a respected authority or so on. 
or they refuse to believe anything because they themselves have never experienced it, because they've never undertaken the meditation practice. Some people have strong effort, but weak concentration. In this case, the mind becomes distracted, where the mind is not focused, can't focus on anything. Some people have strong concentration, but weak uh, effort. And this puts, makes people lazy or drowsy, keeps us from sending the mind on and on and on, keeping, in the present, keeping up with the present moment. And we find ourselves getting drowsy and falling asleep. The way we balance these, we balance confidence with, confidence with wisdom and effort with concentration. We use mindfulness. We use this clear thought. The effort sending the mind to the object, the awareness of the object, the focusing on the object, and the clear knowing of the object. These are all of the mental faculties put into one. Confidence, effort, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. Once we've balanced the four uh, outside faculties with the faculty of mindfulness or the clear awareness, they will work together and they will create a very strong state of mind where we have strong confidence, we have strong effort, we are clearly mindful, and we have strong concentration, and we have very sure wisdom you know, because we see for ourselves and we understand for ourselves without the need to rely on someone else. At that time, this is when the mind is able to overcome states of suffering, overcome states of depression. It's able to, like a strong man is able to bend an iron bar. We also can bend and shape and mold our minds and bring our minds back to a state of, of peace and happiness, overcoming all sorts of unpleasant states. This is a basic understanding of the, some of the fundamentals, some of the fundamental qualities of meditation which we need to keep in mind. We need to be in the present moment and practice continuously. We need to make the clear thought, and we can't just say to ourselves, rising, falling. We have to actually know what's going on in the present moment, and we have to balance the faculties. So this is another in the series on how to meditate, and this is sort of an uh, addition to the actual technique of meditation, which is meant to give a better, stronger quality and a greater uh, benefit to the meditation practice. So I hope that through this you are able to find peace and happiness and freedom from suffering. Thank you again for tuning in, and all the best.